New battle pass! Woo! All right, lifeline. Um, passive, compact glide. Hold jump midair to use the dock to briefly glide. Why is it doing that? To briefly glide. Deploy dock to revive teammates, leaving lifeline free to defend. Okay. So I don't, I don't know if this has the shield on it or not. I assume it doesn't. But you can use the dock to glide, which is pretty cool. Um, dock heals never allies. Dock can be assigned to fall allies once deployed. Basically, from what I've seen, you can just click on somebody and the drone will like follow them around, which is, I guess is what it says, but pretty cool. Um, throw dock to activate Halo shield system. All players inside use hate health and shield consumables faster. So I actually really like this lifeline change because her ultimate, let's be real here. Lifeline's ultimate was absolutely terrible. It is, it was not fun to play. It slowed down the game. Her ult, fire, big fan. New ult fire. It basically puts on like a little circular shield and everyone can heal inside of it. I don't know if you can shoot out of it or not. That I wasn't too sure about, but I guess we'll see. Um, overall, I like the lifeline. I'm excited to see this. So, change our perks a little bit. Increases the time before Doc runs out of fuel in 1.5 seconds. These perks aren't bad. I think lifeline is pretty strong, though. So, her having like perks that seem kind of lame makes sense. Rift relics come from the unstead war from the sky, creating a temporary terror in reality. Provides the contestants of Apex games with powerful weapons and a new survival slot. Boost kits. The game may, be, may give you a boost you need. You can say they're aptly named. Grab the EP1G launcher with splash damage and rocket jumping capabilities. Unleash ex exotic hop-ups like lifesteal, healing with every hit, and instantly refilling health and armor on headshots. Okay. I think we're into the actual meat of the passions. Okay. New support class perks. Alongside Lifeline's Revival, the support class is getting a specialization of their own through two new perks. Heal Expert and Revive Expert. Powering their reset and recovery role on the team and continuing our efforts to bring more meaning and identity to the classes in Apex. I actually really don't like this. I think the classes in Apex should not exist at all. I'm not really a fan of I'm not really a fan of class perks. I think they're too strong and they limit team like team comp variety, but whatever. Support legends will still maintain the access to extended supply bins, blue bins. However, in the, in the spirit of support, banner crafting is no longer an exclusive class perk and instead will be accessible to all legends. This I really like, but I think it should be limited to one banner craft per game. So I don't really like that. Um, support legends now move at walk speed while healing. This is insane, especially for the smaller characters like Conduit and Lifeline. Healing amount from small meds is doubled. Support characters are going to be incredibly overpowered on drop. If you if you have like one or two or three support characters, you want to contest people and fight on drop because this is in like one shield cell giving you 50 HP or one syringe giving 50 HP is ridiculous. Revive Expert Support Legends now have 25% faster revives and grant health regen to their ally on a successful revive. Um, that sounds... <laughs> that If support class is getting this much of a buff and the other classes don't get something similar to this, people are literally going to play three support legends or two support legends, which is insane. Because, like, especially if you're fighting early game, which is what a lot of ranked is, why would you not want to play a support character? Because all of these th all of these things are really good for early game fights and like scrapping. I feel like I feel like people are really just gonna play three supports. Like if you play like Lifeline Conduit and like Newcastle or Gibby, you're gonna be really tough to beat. Like especially early game. They buffed all supports except Loba. That is un that's unfortunate for Loba fans. Support legends will also receive this health regen if revived. I think wow. That's that's insane. Additionally, banner crafting and ally death boxes now spawn a mobile respawn beacon. Okay. Support legends can see mobile respawn beacons inside death boxes. That's pretty actually pretty cool. Um collecting banners will automatically take a mobile respawn in an ally death box if possible. Okay, that's convenient. Skill display improvements. Okay, we saw this. Um into the rift is bringing nostalgia, but we're also bringing something new. Skill display improvements. This feature will display the balancing of each match and update live as each player loads, in the, loads into the match, giving you a true rank dis distribution of all players. So basically, it just tells you what rank people are in your game. I think that's pretty cool. Players were looking for more insights and fairness in their matches, and this is our next step. Okay, I guess. No one's going to complain about that, I don't think. New Universal Melee Raptor's Claw. I, I saw a video of this and it looked pretty cool. 
Um, sharpen your arsenal with the Raptor's Claw, a new universal melee cosmetic. Um, event garbage. You can unlock the Crystal Chamber Death Box. As well as five other variants. Okay, I mean, I, I think this is fine. I think this is fine so far. Um, patch notes, balance updates, battle sense. What is battle sense? Is, is battle sense the recon character passive or is that just in general? Better health stats, better, better health state awareness and feedback, added voice lines for players when players are low on health, added voice lines for when players are low on shields. Um, it's just a bunch of extra info. Thousands is a term. Okay. okay. So just a bunch of more voice lines. That's pretty cool. I I, I, I like this. Just added more voice lines for um, various things you might want to know. So care package devotion returns to the floor. Spin up time decreased. Reverse hip fire titan. Reverse hip fire titan slower and is less accurate. Remove turbo charger slot. Havoc enters the care package. Um, buff the havoc. I don't really have any complaints, but I, the Devo is an absolutely horrible gun. I, I think I think it should be in the care package. I, I think the Devo is a perfect example of a gun that should, is a good pa care package gun. Um, so is the Havoc, but less so to an extent. Uh, good weapon rotation doesn't really matter. Okay, all I just can now craft banner cards. Lubin reset if a player has never been during the reset phase. That Lubin will now eject loot, even if that bin was not opened recently. Ah, huh, okay. Gold bins now spawn fewer pieces of gold loot. I think this is a good change. I think there was so much RNG in grabbing them, and it could really kind of... You, I mean, you could walk up to them and grab three gold helms and two knockdown shields, which is pretty insane. Like, having it having it spread out while you're getting more is a good idea. Like, it shouldn't give you, like, a bunch of the same stuff if you don't, like, need it. Uh, but it is nice to, like, always get an upgrade. Like, if you have three... If you, everything you have is purple, and you open it, and you get three golds, it kind of sucks if you open it and you get stuff you already have. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's kind of maybe just it has. If you have better loot, it would have less spawns. I don't know, but it's if it's gonna suck when you open it and you get stuff you already have. Mythic bin updates can now be tracked and ping through walls more easily. Improved logic to consider if the weapon you already have is a gold weapon and instead grants a different upgrade. Location is now announced before spawning and is marked on the map, the minimap and full maps, and is warned and a warning is issued in the game. This is a huge change. There was so much RNG on it. Most of the time you would get a mythic bin is because it literally just spawned on top of you or it spawned where literally nobody was and you ran and got it. So having it be announced way before, I was shocked that wasn't already a thing, to be honest. Time to open reduced. Doesn't really matter. Um, update the icon. Cool. Op ups boosted loader now activates at zero ammo. Okay, so you don't have to time the reload is what I'm assuming. Now it goes on the Sentinel. That's pretty cool. Gun shield generator, cooldown time, decrease to 10 seconds, reduce spawn rate, hammer points, reduce spawn rate. Okay, here's here is my take on... No, thanks for ready, dude. I appreciate you. Okay, here's my take on the hop-ups, right? Most guns don't take a hop-up. Most people don't even care about them. It's hard to even remember what hop-ups are even in the game. The hop-up attachments clog up the loot pool for, for no reason, and a lot of them are gold items. So you find a gold item, and then you just end up running past it or ignoring it, and it clogs up the loot pool. I think every hop-up should just be removed, and that just be added onto the guns. Um, cause, and usually the hop-ups are really difficult to balance, where they're either really OP or completely useless. So like the boosted loader, for example, at least before this was really useless for the most part, and people would just run past it. And it kind of sucks when you're just running past a gold item. Like, I would much rather have a gold helmet than a boosted loader. So, I don't know. L-Star, damage increased 18. Gold mag now actually does something. That's cool. Um, that's pretty huge, because I don't even really feel like the L-Star was that bad of a weapon beforehand. So, that's cool. Um, they also made gold mag do something, which is nice. Yikes. Longbow damage increased to 60 damage. I'm not I'm not a fan of this. I know there's a lot of longbow enjoyers and sentinel enjoyers. But 
from my perspective as like a top player, snipers are not good for like they lower the skill gap of the game, in my opinion. And a lot of pros agree with that. Um, as a casual, I mean, it's probably fine. I, I think I'm sure the casual community will enjoy it. the longbow changes. But from a pro perspective, this is the stuff you'd rather not see. Uh, Akimba only base hit fire improved. I think the only reason the P20s weren't a real contender with the Mozams was the was how inaccurate they were. So depending on how much this is, this could really make the P20s a lot better. So I, I'll definitely be trying them and seeing seeing how they are. I think it'll make them more able to compete with shotguns. I think they're really fun too, so I think they should be strong. Rampage LMG Rev State increased the K rate, reduced cost per shot, significantly increased energized capacity, successfully charging up Rampage with a Thermite will also trigger a reload. Okay, that's cool. Um, I don't know if this will really affect the Rampage that much in terms of its um, spawn on the tier list, but we'll see. Charging up the Sentinel with a boosted loader equipped will overload the next magazine as though it were a boosted, load, boosted reload. Charging up the Sentinel with a boosted loader equipped will overload the next magazine if it was a boosted reload. Okay. Increased energized capacity, increased energized total time. Charging up a Sentinel with a, with a shield set will also trigger reload. This is a absolutely massive buff for the Sentinel. And we'll have to see. I mean, the Sentinel already like wasn't that bad of a weapon before, so this will definitely... I'd say that the Sentinel after this is probably like A or B tier, to be honest. But like I said, for the same reason I don't like the longbow changes, I don't really like Sentinel buffs either. Yeah, the triple tech's probably cooked after this too. I, I really don't like sniper buffs. I think they make the game not very fun and heavy, heavily RNG, like more RNG. I, I can't really say I'm a fan of, of these sniper changes. Bitfire damage increased to 19. God is good. We love, we love Spitfire buffs around here. Um, definitely we'll, we'll move it up the tier a lot. Adding, adding one damage will always incredibly, will make a gun, just any gun. That's just like a fire buff. God, God is good. Spitfire buffs, my man. My man, Spitfire buffs, we love those. All right, Peacekeeper choke speed increased. That doesn't really make that much of a difference. Triple take, choke speed increased, fire, fire rate slightly increased. So this is actually, this is actually a massive triple take buff also. I might try it actually. I might try some triple take. That's pretty huge. Hard, hard to tell how much of an impact it will make without seeing, because when they just say increased or slightly increased, you don't really know until you use it, but we'll see. So Sport Legends, new class perks. Um, where you saw this? We already saw this. Okay. Um, Conduit, save your speed. Now works on allied death boxes and crafters when a banner can be retrieved. That is actually huge. Now works on respawn beacons and mobile respawn beacons when carrying an allied banner. Now works without min range limit on downed ally. Now works on now works without a minimum range limit on downed allies, allowing conduit to race all the way to her fallen teammate. Upgrades backpack in addition to the extra battery per stack. This upgrade now does battery counts in death boxes. So kind of trying to remove that that perk. Wow. I mean, this obviously isn't as significant as the lifeline and Newcastle and Gibby changes, but this is still really cool and will make conduit a lot more fun to play. So that's um, I like that a lot. Crypto surveillance, crypto surveillance drone now takes fit ring damage 10% per tick. Off the grid players within 20 meters of crypto will be able to spawn a, f a faint cloaking flicker effect. Every 1.5 seconds to help identify cryptos. That's a good change. Cloaked audio range and volume have been increased. Probably, I probably wouldn't take this perk anymore, to be honest, in, in that scenario. As long as, as long as the other one that's competing with this perk is the one that makes the EMP bigger. Dumb of protection, cooldown reduced to 17 seconds. No longer destroyed by Crypto's EMP or Maggie Wrecking Ball. Wow. Upgrades level two, fresh start removed. I don't, know, I don't even know what these are. Increased ult radius by 20% is, is a new perk at level two. New fast shots move faster with shotguns and auto reload shotguns on knock. Baby bubble now reduces cooldown to 12 seconds. Wow. I, I, I. I will say the one problem that Gibby has is that his ult is really inconsistent. 
And this, it, this will change that a lot, especially if it makes it so there's more missiles. 12 sec 17, like a 17 second bubble compared to 30. That's, I mean, this is huge gay buffs. Uh, not really much I even need to say there. I mean, you can just, that's going to be huge for giving. Um, I don't, I don't know if I'll play him, but I'd probably prefer to play a lifeline or Newcastle personally, but uh, people will definitely play Gibby for sure. You'll definitely see a lot of Gibby. Horizon upgrades. Horizon, by the way, her perks are the worst in the entire game. So we'll see. Battery collection removed. New backpack. In addition to extra battery per stack, it's upgraded now. Also it shows battery counts and death boxes. Wait, what? Oh, so it's just, just like a buff perk. I mean, yeah, Horizon's, Horizon is just... The only reason Horizon is bad is because her perks are terrible. Like, she doesn't have any good perks, and this doesn't really change that. But she was meta for a really long time, so I can see why they don't want to have him like too, have her too strong. Mirage left the party. Health bars no longer show during ultimate to give away the real Mirage. Okay. Thank God. Um, upgrades level two. Miracle worker removed. I think it's added as a whole perk thing, and he gets a bad passive. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, the only problem with Mirage really had, he honestly wasn't even that bad of a pick bef before the season. Like, season 22 is actually probably the best he ever was. And that was including this thing where you could see which one he was when you shot him. So he'll... I think Mirage will still be, like, an okay pick for ranked. Newcastle. Okay, these are, these are the huge changes that everybody is talking about. These changes are absolutely insane. Um, Not really sure what's going on here. I don't, I don't really understand this. Newcastle was in a fine spot before. He was already a strong character. Widely picked in the meta. Debatably already frustrating for a lot of people. Uh, and then he gets this, so let's go through it. Mobile Shield no longer takes damage. Can now be repositioned even when Newcastle is down. This is a good change. I don't know why that wasn't the case. But no longer takes damage is crazy. Especially if the cooldown doesn't get reduced. Which uh, is what I'm looking at. It doesn't. So, revive the retrieve the wounded. Revive shield, HP per tier, and creep up increased by 50 percent so his knockdown shield when he's resing has more hp i don't agree with that either um upgrades level two thick shield removed new heroes hustle greatly increases move speed when reviving i heavily 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 disagree with these newcastle changes and i guess i'll get to it when i get through all of them upgrades level three um stronghold it now gives 500 more hp instead of 250 ultimate savior castle wall Castle Wall grants shield regen to allies in impact radius. Regen effect lasts for 50 seconds and damage will pause regen for two seconds. Um, won't begin regeneration until revived is, is until revived if downed. I can't read. I heavily, heavily, heavily disagree with these Newcastle changes. I think he's a great character for the game, but a lot of these changes they're adding make him more frustrating to play against where before I feel like he was strong, hard to play, healthy for the game, and not that frustrating. But these changes are going to make him frustrating. You're not going to be... A single person can't blow out 300 damage early game. Mid game, almost no guns can do 450 damage. End game, only a couple guns can do 750. And by then, they're already going to be revived, especially if they take the move speed when reviving. I think this is horrible for the game and reduces Newcastle's counterplay, which was, in my opinion, his biggest strength as a character in the meta. I think he was very strong, very fun to play, had lots and lots and lots of counterplay options. And this patch does nothing but remove counterplay to a character that was already really strong. So I heavily disagree with basically everything in here. Um, I don't like this at all. I'm not a fan of these changes. I think, I think this will turn a healthy. I think this will turn a healthy character into an incredibly unhealthy one, similar to Rev. This gives me Rev vibes, where there's just no counterplay and everyone plays him. He's broken as poop. I I don't like this at all. I'm not a Newcastle fan. I'm not, I, I don't like this anymore. Revenant Shield will now regen up to 50 HP instead of instantly refreshing after a delay. I think this is a huge... Depends on how long the delay is, I guess, but I think this is good. Um, as long as it's visually... If, if there was a visual indicator to tell how much HP he had left, I would like this change. 
Watson upgrades level two, fresh start removed. New perk gives access to support class revive expert perk. That's I like that actually. I think it's pretty cool. Um modes. Original original King's Canyon on map and POIs. Original loot distribution and loot items. <laughs> Yikes. Yikes. The, th the T hump clip is back. Every original King's Canyon loot. Someone, someone call T hump. Someone call him. He's coming back. It's time for him to. It's time for him to make a sequel. Um. So this just appears to be the, um, all the balance changes for the, um, for the OG Apex mode. Map rotation, pubs and ranked, Broken Moon, Storm Point, World's Edge. I'm not going to complain about that. I really don't like Broken Moon. I think Storm Point's getting a little boring for me personally. World's Edge is an outdated map, but it just doesn't, doesn't really matter. Mixtape, um, pub modes. Okay, ranked entry cost tuning, lower entry cost above platinum tier. I think this is, I think lowering the entry cost isn't that bad of an idea. I know people are really mad about this, but people will, are, were already, I don't think there were enough people in masters and i don't think there were enough people in diamonds i think i don't think the distribution like the dis distribution should be like this right and i i don't think it was really like where it should have been i honestly don't mind these changes the only thing i would i would change personally is i would keep this entry cost but if you duo queued it would cost five more and if you three stack it would cost 10 more I think that would be, I think with this entry cost and they add that stipulation to more for duo queuing twice as much for, for three stacking, I'm fine with this. And if this is, if this is supposed to be like a step toward that direction, I'm okay with that. So I know a lot of people are complaining about, a lot of people on Twitter were complaining about this. Uh, personally, I don't mind.